Joe Frazier, it might be a name you're not familiar with, but he is a natural, supposedly, athlete on the Instagram and YouTube game, publishing himself as a fitness influencer. And recently, he's gotten under some pretty heavy scrutiny. This has actually happened in the past because it seems that every time he gets a girlfriend, he publicizes having a girlfriend and involves her in all of his content. But what we're seeing here is a repeat of something that's happened in the past, which is his current, or at least ex girlfriend now has claimed that she was abused by him after they broke up and she also makes a claim that I think is really important. Her name's Tiana Clark. She already deleted her Instagram profile after he made a response video, which has now been taken off the internet as well. Now briefly, just to give you some background, Joe Frazier creates a lot of content about bodybuilding and fitness, just being a natural athlete. He makes the typical YouTube videos with the catchy thumbnails and the interesting titles saying, I traveled to try the world's best pizza or walking the streets of South Sudan, the drink that got me shredded, the workout program to get huge, the 10,000 calorie challenge in America, all sorts of weird videos like this. He's basically a fitness guy, but also tries to make really sort of clicky titles and thumbnails, basically the typical Mr. Beast formula at this point, which good for him. It's working. He has 1.7 million subscribers on YouTube. And then on Instagram, he is doing very well as well. He's almost at 400,000 followers. A pretty impressive dude. If you ask me a lot of accolades, and someone who's accomplished quite a bit. But all of the while, he has claimed natural as someone who generally doesn't look like he's on gear and generally, honestly, just looks like a pretty lean natural dude and uses a lot of filters. I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me he was natural. It wouldn't pass me by twice. I'd be like, yep, that checks out. Nor would I think he was an abuser of women. And supposedly when this Tiana Clark girl came out and posted all about him, she said that he was abusing her. She posted bruises, all of this information. Then later, Joe Fraser came back and made a long video posting evidence that he didn't do those things. And in fact, she abused him, which to be honest, that is a murky situation. When he said, he said, she said, that's what she said. Another good one. You're on fire. And either if he or she abused him or her, it doesn't really matter. It's probably a really toxic relationship and they deserve to be both away from each other. You're toxic. Man, you're cranky. But likely he wasn't actually at fault for abusing her. It seems like she was definitely the abuser and trying to get back at him for breaking up with her. But as part of her media takeover, trying to burn his name to the ground, she posted some really interesting photos. And these photos were of her showing his trash cans in his room and pulling out the needles and vials that he has in there. Now, I want to be very clear here. I don't know if this is accurate. He actually hasn't addressed it and he seems to have completely just gone without saying anything about what's happened. And I don't know if he's even going to. So to be fair, I can't actually say if this is true because a lot of the other things that Tiana had claimed were also pretty fucking valuable. So I can't really say if anything she had to say was true at all. But what I can say is that there's a very clear distinction with what is being taken. And it is very possible that maybe our friend was a fake natural in this instance. We can see in this picture a lot of 3cc syringe as well as a couple insulin syringes. There's a growth hormone vial or several of them on the left hand side of this photo where we can see that all of them have been used besides maybe one growth hormone vial. It's an entire kit that he bought. And then to the right, we can see those 3cc syringes, all the wrappers, alcohol pads, and things like that. That. And then on the right of that, we can see the trash can where there is a uh, several more CC, three CC syringes. We have several vials, which looks like to be a very clearly a testosterone vial. It, it is a clear oily substance. And usually if it's a clear oily substance, you can bet your ass it's testosterone and not trenbolone or something of a different nature. And I would imagine that if there's no other vials in this trash, she's definitely just using testosterone. So what could be happening here? Let's just be a little bit hypothetical. Is this physique obtainable? naturally. Is Joe Frazier someone who can take steroids just to look pretty fucking mid, if you ask me, with some decent lighting and good editing of his photos? Well, the actual likelihood is that, to be honest, if he's taking steroids for this kind of I feel really bad because uh, this would arguably be most achieved naturally. And I, I hate to say that, but it's true. Let's just say he is taking steroids, though. What would he be taking? The, the reality of the situation is what I would assume is that he is taking a bit of testosterone, right? If he was taking anything, he's taking 200, maybe 250 milligrams of testosterone and two to three IUs of growth hormone. Nothing serious, just enough to stay leaner, to stay more muscular, to be able to work.
work a lot on content creation, travel the world, do things that are pretty inconsistent with having an amazing physique, and still maintain a pretty reputable and amazing physique. The thing about Joe is that he grew up a very skinny kid. He started out as a very skinny kid. He slowly built muscle over time, and it got to a point where he started to make a lot of money from building muscle, from making content around his physique. And generally when this thing kind of happens, you would assume that, well, if I'm making money looking this good, what happens if I look 10% better, or 15% better, or 20% better? Does the income keep scaling with the look? And inevitably, that seems to be true. And so someone in his position who grew up skinny, got a decent physique, got some reputation from developing that physique, and then maybe wanted to take it to that next level to where he is getting multi-millions of subscribers, of viewers on his videos, a couple milligrams of testosterone, and a handful of growth hormone. It's an easy trade-off, right? You're talking a couple hundred bucks a month for a couple tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. It's, it's a very easy trade-off, and you can use steroids and other anabolics without really looking enhanced, which I think a lot of people miss. And I would propose this question to you as a way of thinking through this logically, which is, let's just say you were someone making $4,000 suddenly off content creation. You were pretty content with this, and you're really happy that on a month-to-month -month basis, you were seeing $4,000 come in from the content you were pushing out. Great. But you wanted to make that more. And people are saying, dude, your physique is so sick. It's so awesome. We'd love to see more content of you. Keep posting, bro. And so you're like, well, I noticed that when I'm leaner, I get more interactions with my content. I noticed that when I got a pump, I get more likes on my photos. I noticed that when I'm definitely posting content that's more centered around my fitness and physique, I get more subscribers per video. Why don't I just take a little bit more? Why don't I just take a little bit more to get to that next level? Whatever that next level might be. Then at that point, a couple hundred milligrams of testosterone doesn't seem so bad. And, and well, shoot, if I'm getting testosterone from this TRT clinic, I might as well throw in a little bit of growth hormone as well, because, you know, why not? I can afford it. And if it's going to make me stay leaner and give me more interactions on all the content I produce, it's definitely worth it, right? And so he goes down that path and starts to integrate these things in his lifestyle. And suddenly he develops a really good physique. He can take his shirt off a lot more, take pictures, look acceptable in almost any situation where he's been traveling, he's been eating poorly, he's been inconsistent in the gym, and still look better than 90% of the population. People are going to like this content and then promote him more. Now, let's just say after that, he's made $10,000 a month from the content he's producing. What's stopping him from going even higher? And this is kind of the path that most influencers take. As you can see, they start out at a decent physique, they get a little bit better. It's like, holy shit, I'm making a lot more money. They get way better and they start making a lot more money. And at a certain point, the tower of cards kind of all falls over because they get to a point where they reach like critical mass where everyone kind of realize, hey, this dude's abusing a ton of gear. It's probably not healthy. This is a little weird now. So at the end of it all, I, I mean, I really do think that Joe Frazier is probably a really good guy. I don't know about the whole abuse situation. That's not something for me to comment on. It does seem like he was pretty wrongly accused of some things by his ex-girlfriend and she was very clearly in the wrong and that's why she deleted her entire Instagram account. And as well, it does seem like she maybe had some interwoven truths within there, especially Especially when it comes to the pharmacology that he may have used. It could be fraudulent, but it seems very legitimate as he is not mentioning it. And it's the one thing that he hasn't mentioned about the whole debacle. So I would clearly say that, man, probably, maybe, allegedly, Joe Frazier is definitely on the sauce. And if I was to guess, just based off his trash can, it's going to be something like a little bit of growth hormone and a bit of testosterone, probably 200, maybe 250 milligrams per week. There's been posts on Reddit where people have talked about him looking a little suspect and honestly these people on natty and juice are just like uh they're just completely delusional i'll be honest are you delusional do, are, do you suffer from a mental illness it's very understandable that this seems like i'm mentally deluded and i, mm -hmm. I strongly oppose that view a lot of these people think that everything requires gear to look any specific way when a lot of this is just natural people however i will say this one picture does look a little sus because you can see his nipples are really inflamed here and not just a around the actual like nipple tissue, but outside of the, the nipple itself. It's a pretty dead giveaway that democracy's dose of steroids has been involved in this person's situation or whoever has these inflamed nipples. It doesn't typically happen in a normal person who's well past the age of puberty. So it does bring me to some points of skepticism. However, again, it's hard to say if he's really using gear for this physique, I feel bad for him because that's just quite honestly, really underwhelming. But let me know what you think down in the comments below if you like this video. 
lovely if you would subscribe. It does me huge favors and it's completely free to you as well. If you don't want to, you know, get gyno, be a fake natty, all those gross things, we have a Discord group down below and this Discord group is probably one of the best assets that you can have in the fitness slash bodybuilding worlds for many different reasons. Click the landing page down below and it'll tell you a lot more about it if you're interested in entering a private group that would also support this channel. Thanks.